So what are some techniques for managing pests without having to go spray? We have things that we can do before we have to reach for spraying. One of the first things we can do is the mechanical and physical controls, and one of them is hand picking. Uh, now you can't hand pick spider mites or aphids, but you can hand pick tomato hornworms, and you don't even have to do it. If you have a small child in the neighborhood, <laughs> invite them over, pick one hornworm, drop it on the sidewalk, and stomp on it. And it'll be like stepping on a packet of ketchup in McDonald's. It just squirts across the floor. You don't even have to say anything. You go inside and look out the window, and within 15 minutes, they will have found their friends, brought them over, and they'll be combing your plants for hornworms. That's called importing natural enemies. It's a, it's a biocontrol technique. Handpicking does work. I occasionally will vacuum some pests, and this is done in commercial, commercial organic uh, growing. Uh, in, in California, you can Google it and see pictures, but it, they, in strawberry fields, they have giant vacuums that go down the field and suck up the ligus bugs that cause the berries to get deformed, and they just vacuum them right up. And I've used it for, you know, if you just have a few coal crops like broccoli and cabbage, cauliflower, and you get these little harlequin bugs on it, you can just zip them up. Or maybe the... Um, uh, leaf-footed bugs, stink bugs on your tomatoes when they hatch out and they're in a little herd and they don't have wings. Uh, just, just vacuum them right up or knock them into some soapy water. That's just mechanical control. We can exclude them with screens and barriers. Uh, one example would be row cover fabric. Uh, row cover fabric is the same material that lines a disposable baby diaper. It's that soft, spun-bound polyester that moisture and air move right through but bugs can't get through. It's like putting a screen porch around your greens. And so you don't have to spray those if you've put the row cover over them and no bugs can get in and deal with them. Uh, another example, but, and by the way, row cover fabric is so light, the plants just lift it right up. You don't have to have supports unless you're planting seeds in the dirt and then you need some kind of a hoop to hold it up so the rain doesn't wash the fabric down into the soil and mess up your, your little seed row. But once they get growing, they don't need that support. Another technique is to add, uh, uh, is to use a little band of paper around plants for cutworms. Cutworms will not chew through newspaper. They don't recognize that little strip of newspaper around the stem and that succulent plant is inside and they won't cut through the paper uh, because they, I guess they just don't know that that's a plant to chew on. Uh, but that works pretty well. Uh, other examples would be, uh, you might have heard of using a strip of, of uh, copper uh, material around a bed to keep slugs and snails from crossing over, or a little band of diatomaceous earth sprinkled down that they don't like to cross over because it's like walking barefoot through broken glass for them. Uh, but those are just mechanical, physical exclusion. Another thing is a blast of water. These devices are kind of hard to find on the market, but uh, this one used to be on the market called the water wand. It's small droplets at a high velocity. So it, it's the opposite of the thing you water your plants with that puts out large droplets at a lower velocity. This one is just a mist that is shooting so fast that here it is on some pole beans going eight feet in the air. Uh, and you go right underneath the plant leaves and it blasts all of the mites off and it'll even take off aphids. Uh, Dr. Dries, uh, one, a former extension entomologist, did a study in Houston where they, they quanti quantified the fact that it kept aphids under control on some aphid susceptible plants just by blasting them once a week, knocking them off with water. And you don't get them all, but you don't have to get them all. You just want to reduce their numbers. Uh, the only one I've seen on the market currently is, is called a Mighty Fine sprayer, and uh, they're not cheap, I, probably about 50 bucks or so for one, but they last a long time, and they just have an agricultural cone jet nozzle. A little looks like you're looking at a BB hole in the end of a brass nozzle, and uh, some people have done homemade versions with PVC, uh, but they work pretty well. Another mechanical physical control is reflective foil mulch. And when, in talking about research, th this was a research trial we did in Conroe with Master Gardeners. And uh, Dr. Jackman, who is there in the picture from A&M, uh, used to be an entomologist here. We, we had read in some organic book that reflective mulch controls squash vine borer. And so we put 72 squash plants on foil and 72 
on regular mulch without foil to do a replicated trial of them. At the end of the trial, we took every squash plant up, split it lengthwise, and counted the vine borers in it. It was a research trial, and we found it was 60% effective against the vine borer, which is helpful, but I wouldn't call that control. So we're testing these things to see if they hold water. But it was 100% effective uh, in our trial against the insects that vector squash viruses. You know how your squash gets the green and yellow mottled and the leaves get all strappy? Uh, there's a bug that's chewing on a weed with the virus, bringing it, coming over and chewing on your plant and infecting it like a mosquito would carry malaria to a person. And this reflective mulch, they didn't like that bright light reflecting up and they didn't feed on those plants. So it worked pretty good. So those are the mechanical and physical controls.